international. So, so wonderful to be part of an international group. So delighted to be here. And uh, Nira, I'm not sure if I can use the word ecofeminism in my presentation. Not sure, I'll try, but <laughs> this is a good challenge. And James, if I understood correctly, the theme of today's presentation or, or the theme of for Toastmasters was clarity, is that correct? Good, so I am sharing today a very short presentation around the theme of clarity. And my hope for you really by the end of these 15, 20 minutes is to walk away with a few strategies to, to create more clarity for yourselves and more clarity for your audience so that your message has more impact. So let me just quickly share my screen with you. I have a, just a few slides that I wanna share. So here we go. This works. Yes. Okay. So clarity. Here we go. So the theme is clarity. And I've broken down this presentation for you into three parts to make it really clear. And that is clarity of intention, clarity of content, and clarity of deliver of delivery. So I'm going to break down each concept so that you get a better sense of how you can apply this, how you can implement this into the preparation and the delivery of your presentation. Really because the, the, the notion behind this, this, this is important for me to explain to you. For me, a presentation is like a journey. It has a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an, an end, a destination. And the clearer you are on the destination and the, the journey you wanna take your audience on, the more effective it's going to be. And of course, there's so many other things I could share today, but I wanted to keep this as clear and simple for you as possible. So before I, I start on the, the intention, I wanted to ask you to share in the chat, what is something that you consider before you even put together a presentation? What, so what are some of the things that, that you think of before even putting together and building your presentation? You can share in the chat. The purpose, yep. Excellent, thanks, Lydia. The audience, who's the on the subject, the idea, subject matter and audience, key message, who will, who will be in the audience? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. So over the years, I've developed a, a very simple little framework or model that I call the APS model and it stands for three letters and you've already mentioned two of them. So it's nothing new, but it's really to create this clarity of intention, the, this dialogue that you're already engaging in before you even deliver the presentation. So the first letter of course stands for A, who's the audience? What are their needs, their hopes and concerns? What's their level of knowledge? Because again, if you can start communicating with them before you put together the, the presentation, you're already making it more relevant to them. Then of course the P stands for purpose. And I'm just going to take that a little further. The P stands for purpose as in what do I want to achieve by the end of the presentation? And if I go back to that notion of a presentation being a journey with a destination, I start with the end in mind. I start with the destination. In other words, what do I want my audience to know? What do I want them to think? How do I want them to feel by the end of my presentation? So beginning with the end in mind allows me to be very clear on what I want to achieve. And then I work backwards from that thought. So the end informs the content. It allows me to be very clear. It allows me to commit to my intention. So that that again feeds the clarity of intention. Beginning with the end in mind, to have a clear purpose. And then the last letter stands for, so what? And this is, I find an, an element that a lot of presenters don't consider. 
And I'd like to, to emphasize that because it really stands for what's in it for them. What's in it for my audience to sit here and listen to me? And, and why do I share that? Because oftentimes we feel so passionate about what we want to talk about. We think that our content is very valuable and we think that what we believe to be important is also important to the audience. And while that has some merit, we also really want to spend some time thinking of how it would benefit them. Yeah, those are just some thoughts that I leave you with on the clarity of intention. Why should they care? How can I be of service of to, uh, to my audience? And really that notion of service is very important to me. So I wanna be thinking, how can I serve my audience? How can I make this worthwhile? Yeah, does that make sense so far? Okay, so that kind of encapsulates the clarity of intention, the audience, the purpose starting with the end in mind, and then the what's in it for them to listen to. Now, once we've kind of established the framework or the intention, then we start to move on to the content. And of course, I'm skipping some things so I can pack in as much as possible for you with, with clarity. And when it comes to content, from my experience, a lot of presenters think the more the better. So the more ideas, the more facts, the more examples, the more stories, the better it is. But from my experience, the more we pack into our presentation, the more it leads to overwhelm. The audience tends to be overwhelmed or distracted. And then as you know, what happens as a result is that the audience will tune out. It's just too much information. We know from research that the, the mind, the brain cannot process this much. So I'm going to invite you when it comes to content, clarity of content, to consider a rule, which is called the rule of three. And maybe you even heard of the rule of three. And the, the rule of three is, is a, a concept that we find in writing, but it's, it's predicated on the notion that a trio is easier to process, is more entertaining, more evocative and more effective really than other numbers. And why is that, we might ask ourselves, is that three is really ubiquitous. We find it in, in folklore, we find it in stories, we find it in advertising, we find it in slogans. And I'm gonna ask you maybe if you could share in the chat, you can think of something that comes in threes that you can think of either advertising, for example, just do it, Nike, or the three little pigs, or Goldilocks and the, the three bears, or the three musketeers, or even if you think of a famous election campaign slogan, yes, we can, Obama, right? Or Christian says, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Absolutely. So this number, and I don't want to, to make it sound cartoonish at all. And Craig says, we used to have three cats. It was unsustainable. <laughs> That's funny, Craig. We'll try five the next time. Anyway, the, the idea of the rule of three is to create clarity of content in your presentation. To, in other words, think of three speaking items or three main topics or three points that you're going to use to structure your presentation. For example, first point, the problem. Second, the consequences. Three, the solutions and benefits. Or maybe you start with the past the present, and then you go into the future. And then you can take those three points and subdivide them into three sub points. Possibly you could try that. And again, the, this rule of three, when it comes to clarity of content, it's not just clarity for 
the audience, but it's also clarity for you as a presenter. Because if you know you have a simple roadmap to follow, how do you think it's gonna make you feel as a presenter? It's gonna make you feel just more secure and more confident because you just know what those stops are on your journey. Yeah. So again, I don't, I don't want to sound rigid here and say, oh, I can, you know, you can only use three topics. No, that's not what I'm saying. I am inviting you to just consider trying this on. And I can tell you from experience that clients in workshops or individual have found this to be very helpful. And you can use this not only in presentations, you can use this in meetings. You can use this in discussions. It just creates clarity, okay? So I wanted to share that with you. Now we've talked about the clarity of intention, the clarity of content. We move forward and as great Toastmasters, you've rehearsed your presentation. I know you, you're, you've been very much encouraged and this, this, this practice has been instilled in you to, to practice and, and I would say as a performer because my background is performance and a singer by trade is to come into your presentation prepared and the last so the last thing I want to share with you today is the clarity of delivery when it comes to delivery there are a number of things and one of the things of course Nira has shared today is to avoid those filler word or in other words the interstitial words that create static in the line. And uh, I, I'm just going to ask you to share in the chat, is there anything that comes in mind uh, to mind when you think of clarity of delivery? What else might be important when you're delivering your message so that you can convey clarity? <clears throat> Let's check the chat. Pauses, yes, pronunciation, beautiful. Yuditya, mm hmm I'll just see if anything else coming in. Tone, yes. Christian, voice, loudness, yes, the volume, <clears throat> excuse me. Kamaria, pausing for emphasis, yes. Gesture, match of the message, keeping on topic, absolutely. These are fabulous uh, points here, repetition. Mm hmm Body language, eye contact, beautiful. Wonderful, thank you so much. And of course, because I'm very, um, indoctrinated i've self-indoctrinated myself with regards to the rule of three i'm going to break down the clarity of delivery into three points and the first one is slow down and you some of you already mentioned it and that is keeping this the pace manageable for the audience slow it down because when we're nervous and we all are nervous a little bit especially at the beginning slow yourself down so when you rehearse slow it down to a point that is even slightly be be beyond your comfort zone so that when you're presenting is just right slow down and then secondly <laughs> emphasize keywords and what does that mean it means don't make every word the same elevate some so that they pop out so that what you're feeling at that moment, notice how I emphasize your, what you're feeling is evocative. So it, it brings out an emotion or a reaction within your audience. So when you emphasize a word, momentarily your pitch goes up and the volume is increased. So it creates tonal variety. Yes. So as you create tonal variety, it's like music. It's more interesting. So it's not just what you say, it's really how you say it. Slowing down, emphasizing keywords. And as many of you already said, silence. Use silence, meaning pause. Allow yourself to breathe. And as you allow yourself to breathe, you allow the audience to breathe and process the information. And I want to say here, it's not just what you say that's important, it's also what you don't say. So the silence is really fundamental to, to the, the message you're conveying. 
slowing down, emphasizing keywords in silence. Of course, there are many more aspects. So, and I just wanted to share those with you because they're, they're just fundamental. And for those of you who have beautiful accents, you know that it can add a, a level or a layer of added complexity. So remember that we're delivering information for the audience. It's not about us. I leave you with this. It's not about you, the presenter. It's for the audience. You're doing this in service to the audience so that they can walk away feeling this was worth my time. So we do our best, we prepare our best, we rehearse our best, and then we just give. We just go in with a spirit of giving. And that's what guides me. If I'm feeling nervous, is I go in with the spirit of giving. So to wrap this up, clarity of intention, clarity of content, clarity of delivery, all a few concepts here to help you prepare better, know your audience better, keep it simple, manageable, and then deliver it with confidence, with authenticity, so that the audience connects with you and walks a bit away with some valuable content. And with that, I just wanna wish you all the best and good luck so that you can inspire with your messages and inspire the world to be a better place. Thank you so much.